We thought it was just going to be really the run of the mill pregnancy and birth, labor and delivery. Her OBGYN came in and saw that she was progressing, broke her water to try to speed up that, that as well. And Melanie started complaining that she didn't feel well. Then I see her kind of slump over to one side. Her eyes roll back and she starts uh, convulsing. And I look over at her monitors and everything starts flashing zero. She's not breathing. They call a code blue. The whole medical team came in and quickly unplugged the bed and, and rolled her out the door. Melanie Pritchard was rushed to the operating room where a team of doctors performed an emergency C-section. Melanie was dying from an amniotic fluid embolism, a rare allergic reaction during pregnancy that caused her heart and lungs to shut down. A well-known pro-life activist, Melanie was now fighting for her own life. My wife was clinically dead when, when they delivered my daughter. They thought there was absolutely no way that she could come back, that she looked deader than dead. We were going through an emotional roller coaster. And my first thought was, I'm a widower and we'd only been married three years. I just remember sitting down and we just held hands and we prayed and we just pleaded with God that he may just bring her back. The next 48 hours were long and difficult. Doctors were able to resuscitate Melanie and moved her to the ICU. As she lay unconscious, Doug was allowed to see his new daughter for the first time. I look at her and she's got blonde hair and blue eyes, just like her mother, not at all like me. And the nurse asked me what, what her name is. Without hesitation, I said, Gabriella, the heroine of God. It was probably the most bittersweet moment I've ever felt in my life. The bittersweet part of it is that Melanie may not be there and that I may have to raise this, this little princess on my own. Meanwhile, Melanie's brother, a cardiac thoracic surgeon, arrived at the hospital and began reviewing her case. So they got her to the ICU and she was extremely sick and she wasn't getting better, she was getting worse. And she was in a state of cardiovascular collapse. You don't survive stuff like that. They had asked us to say our goodbyes because they didn't think she was gonna make it through it. I remember asking her vividly, if you have any fight left in you, then fight. I never thought it was gonna be my little sister that was gonna be the first one to go. I wouldn't accept her dying. He soon discovered that Melanie's low blood pressure was the result of internal bleeding from the emergency C-section. Doctors rushed her back to the operating room. They found an, a uterine artery that was just wide open, just draining her blood out. They took out of her belly five liters of blood. And to put that in perspective, you or I have five liters of blood in our entire body. 24 hours after she was declared clinically dead, Melanie regained consciousness. She was prepped for transport to the Mayo Clinic for yet another surgery. Her eyes welled up with tears, and I ran over and I grabbed her hand and I held it tight, and I was like, how are you doing? You're doing great, I'm so proud of you. And just knowing that I wanted her to know her, that I was there, that I loved her so much. Her sister came back in with a Blackberry that had a picture of Ella on it, and it was terribly important to us because had she not survived this surgery, we wanted her to be able to see Ella. Melanie arrived at Mayo Clinic with a bleak prognosis as doctors began the surgery to close her abdomen. The chances were very high that she was going to need a heart and or heart-lung transplant. They thought that she would not be able to, uh, that she would be, have some serious neurological impairments. By now, many friends and family had gathered at the hospital to pray for Melanie. I remember looking around and seeing everybody just at one point or another just just hang their head in prayer and a lot of our friends that were at the hospital or that had come to the hospital were providing updates to people via Facebook and Twitter and sending the, the prayer chain, so to speak. Thousands tweeted, pray for Melanie, which even made Twitter's top 100 list in 2010. We heard feedback from Christians in the Middle East and Christians in the underground church in China that, that, that were sharing their prayers with us. That's a miracle that she had so many prayers helping her out. Within 24 hours of her final surgery, Melanie was breathing on her own and weaned off most medication. Within a week, she was released to go home. I woke up in this incredible peace. My first memory was just asking them what happened. You know, it's just waking up like in confusion, going, what? wait, why am I here? Where's Ella? 
And the crazy thing is, is now she's totally normal. She's got no residual effects. She's got no neurological effects, no cardiac effects. She's as healthy as they can be. And Ella, who is a little angel, she's completely healthy. There's n absolutely no problems with her. It's incredible. I'm a different nurse having gone through this as well. It definitely showed me the power of prayer. I don't remember anything that happened in the hospital. This was tragic and traumatic for so many. So many other people were praying like crazy. I mean, I remember just weeping and crying and thinking, how could these people love me so much? Like, a stranger even. Like, wow, this is so amazing. All I care about is having enough air in my lungs to tell my husband how much he means to me. And just really, you know, being present to my friends and to my family. Her recovery is a miracle. Her survival is a, a miracle. I think it's very clear that, that God answers prayers. I had always prayed that the Lord would protect me in, in pregnancy and childbirth because I thought with all the work that I do in the pro-life movement, if the evil one wanted to attack me, that would be this body would do it. So I believed in the power of prayer, but now that I've lived through the power of prayer, I believe it a hundred times more.